we've got Raekwon Gray with us now, the Florida State redshirt junior forward. Raekwon, you want to give us a thumbs up here if you're good to go? Awesome. So once again, thanks everyone for participating with us here this afternoon. We're joined by Raekwon Gray and we'll begin the press conference. Don't forget, use the raised hand function to indicate you'd like to ask a question. When you're called on for your question, please be sure to state your name and affiliation first. And our first question here this afternoon will come from Mike with the Orlando Sentinel. Mike, go ahead. Yeah, Raekwon, congratulations on the victory. I'm j just curious, you know, obviously you guys didn't get to play last year. How much are you guys sort of playing for last year's team? And also, um, how, how uh, confident are you guys that you're, you'll be able to make a run after today? Um, yeah, like you said, last year we didn't get to, you know, participate in this tournament. You know, everyone, you know, was shut down. But I mean, we're kind of playing for the guys that came before us. You know, they set a legacy. You know, we made some runs to the Sweet 16 and Elite Eight. And I think that, you know, we're confident that we have the team and the uh, talent to, you know, get to that Final Four and actually get over that hump. So, I mean, we're counting a lot, a lot of pride with us at Florida State, our university, and, you know, the guys that came before us. So, you know, that's definitely our motivation, you know, going forward just to, you know, have last year's team on our mind and, you know, just advancing for this year's team. So. Thank you. Thanks for your question there, Mike. And next up, Corey Clark from Warchant.com. Corey, you can unmute yourself and ask your question. Yeah, Raekwon, uh, you guys didn't hit a three, um, and you only attempted one in the second half. Uh, what was the message at halftime? Obviously, you got Balsa going early in the second half. It just seemed like Coach told you, we're going downhill. Don't shoot threes. Get to the basket. Um, not necessarily. I think we just, you know, took what the defense gave us. You know, we knew that we had a, a height advantage and a strength advantage on those guys, and we didn't want to settle for jump shots. And uh, I think we that, you know, our game plan coming in was to, you know, attack the paint and, and use our athleticism to, you know, get to the basket and, you know, just take what the defense gives us. And we missed some shots, but I think that, you know, our defense was what really pulled us through in this game. So, you know, regardless of how our offense was, I think the defense was the key thing that, you know, pulled this win out for us. So. Thanks for your question there. Corey, next up, we'll turn to Kurt Weiler with the Tallahassee Democrat. Kurt, go ahead, unmute yourself and ask your question. Raekwon, I think uh, MJ had four points and Scotty had four points. I mean, it, it's not a new thing, just the depth of this team and how many different guys can do it. But what to say about this team? I mean, being able to win an NCAA tournament team when, game when those guys give you, what, less than 10 points total? Um, like I said before, you know, those guys go out and play defense regardless of how, you know, their offensive, offensive game is going. And we got a whole team that, you know, can come in and defend anybody. I think that that's what we rely on, you know, especially in the tournament time. You know, all your shots are not going to fall. You know, you want to miss some easy baskets. But, I mean, you can control what you do on the defensive end and, you know, how much effort you play with. And those guys did that. You know, Scott is going to bring energy every day. And MJ's a, a poised senior, and he's been here before. And he's, he want to win. So, I mean, regardless of if their shots are falling or not, they were going to play defense and defend and, you know, make sure we got this win. So, I, I really appreciate those guys, you know, coming out tonight and, you know, giving that effort. Thank you, Kurt, for your question. For our next question, we'll turn to Lane Hurt with Seminoles.com. Lane, please unmute yourself in a moment here and ask your question. Hey, Raekwon, how important was your team's composure today? With a team like that, they kept fighting back, come fighting back. It could be easy to get frustrated, but you guys were able to keep your composure and each time kind of move that lead back out. Um, I think that we just learned from our mistakes in the past. You know, obviously, uh, these last few games, or the last couple of weeks of the regular season that, I mean, you can go to Georgia Tech game, we're up in that game, and uh, the North Carolina game, and, you know, things like that. So I think we just learned from our mistakes. And, you know, we limited our turnovers. We still turned the ball over a little too much today, but, I think that, we, you know, at the end of the game, we just kind of, you know, learn from our past games, you know, taking care of the ball when we needed to, getting quality shots, moving the ball. And, you know, like I said before, getting stops on defense. And that was the key thing that we did down the stretch that, that we didn't do in the past uh, games that we lost when we were up. So, you know, defense and, you know, just playing smart basketball on the offensive end is really what helped us tonight. Okay, thanks for your question there, Lane. Uh, moving on. Let's turn to uh, John Tiedel with HoopsHD.com. John? Thanks, uh, John Titel from HoopsHD.com. Raekwon, uh, I know it must seem like a lifetime ago, but I believe your last tournament game two years ago, you went scoreless against Gonzaga. Um, I was curious either, how has your skill set progressed from two years ago, 
and or did you learn anything from that loss that you think helped you or will help you this year? Um, I mean, I'm an older guy. I think that my maturity was a, a, a huge thing, you know, going back to two years ago. I think I was kind of anxious back then, just excited to play as a redshirt freshman. Now I'm an older guy, and I'm one of the leaders on the team that guys look at and uh, lean on. So I think I have to be composed throughout all situations and, you know, just play my game. You know, my teammates believe in me, my coaches have believed in me. You know, if I just go out there and play my game, I think that, you know, I'll be fine. But, you know, definitely the maturity thing is, you know, the comparison from two years ago. Go back to Mike with the Orlando Sentinel. Yeah, Rick, one, the uh, ACC didn't have such a great opening day of the tournament. Um, looks like you guys might be carrying the torch for the league. Are you looking forward to that? Um, yeah, I mean, we come, we kind of control, we control, you know, we can't control what the other teams play or, you know, if they win or not. But I mean, it's kind of sad to see those teams go away so, so uh, quick. But I mean, like I said, we're going to control, we control and uh, Colorado's our next opponent. You know, we're looking forward to those guys and we definitely want to represent the ACC in a, a good, a good fashion. So, you know, obviously we want to take pride in that and try to win this, win this thing for our conference and, you know, show that we're the best conference in the country. Uh, Corey with Warchant.com, please uh, unmute yourself and ask your question. Yeah, Raekwon, I was wondering, did Leonard, did Coach Hamilton uh, even tell you guys he had hurt himself? And um, I guess what he's still standing. He looks like the same guy, even with, I guess, a ruptured Achilles. And I know he's a serious dude, but do you make fun of him at all? Uh, are you are you guys allowed to do that? Uh, yeah, I mean, he's he's a fun guy, so, I mean, he don't really mind. But uh, we saw him just walking to practice one day with a boot on, and, you know, he explained to us what happened. You know, he kind, he kind of keep things to himself to, you know, limit distractions on our team. So, obviously, you know, that's our head coach, and we care about him, about his health and stuff like that. But, you know, he, he's, a, he's a tough guy. You know, he doesn't really can tell tell us how he's feeling or complain about it. So, he just want to uh, keep going, and that's what we kind of take on the mentality, just keep going and not let the uh, things bother us. So, I mean, but he's a tough guy. You know, we, we crack jokes here and there about him, uh, walk around in his boot. But, you know, that's our guy. You know, we're going to go out there and play for him. So. Thanks for that question, Corey. Uh, Matt Merschel from the Orlando Sentinel. Matt, you can unmute yourself here in a second. Ask your question. Yeah, Raekwon, how big was it for, when, uh, for Balsa early on in the second half to kind of get you guys going maybe as you guys were, were maybe coming out of the intermission? What would you see of his performance today? Uh, it was huge. You know, we depend on him a lot, you know, inside for, for uh, rebounds, block shots, scoring. And when he's aggressive, I think that's when we're at our best. You know, he's a huge part of our team. You know, but when he's going, I think that we're definitely a high-level team. And, you know, we tell him that all the time we have confidence in him so just to play his game. And I think, you know, obviously being the first game and his first tournament game, he had to settle down a little bit. But I think he did that coming out in the second half. And obviously you saw we wanted to run when he, he was playing, you know, aggressive and, and being who he was. So, I mean, I, he had a great performance. And I think that he's going to keep building off of it. And, he, you know, sky's the limit for him. And I think that he's going to be a huge part of our tournament run this year. Thanks, Matt. Time for uh, another couple of questions. Matt, you have a follow-up there? Uh, yeah. I, well, you know, do you know anything about, obviously, you guys are going to play Colorado. Do you guys know anything of Colorado going into this next game? Um, I mean, I've watched them a few times, you know, just late night up on uh, ESPN and stuff like that. Caught a, a few Pac-12 games. But, I mean, as a team, we haven't really sat down and discussed those guys yet. And I think we'll do that later tonight, you know, uh, once we get back and settle. And uh, they're a good team, obviously. You know, not many teams make it to the round 32, and they're one of those teams. So, obviously, they're a good team, and they come out of a great conference, and it's going to be a good basketball game. So, I, I think that we're going to have to come in with that same mentality, just you know, trying to win the game by all means and, <clears throat> and, you know, let the chips fall where they fall. And, uh, obviously, they're a good team, like I said before. But we're just going to uh, game plan later today and uh, find out and learn some uh, things about them. Thank you. Go to Mike with the Orlando Sentinel. So you guys didn't real, didn't know that uh, Coach Hamilton had ruptured his Achilles until he shows up at practice in a boot. Is that right? And 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 uh, do you guys borrow from his toughness? I mean, he he he's walking around out there like nothing's wrong. Uh, yeah. I mean, he just came to practice one day and uh, he's a little late, just walking in with a boot, and we kind of just asked and he explained. So. I mean, but yeah, like you, like I said before, he's a tough guy. You know, that's how he, you know, puts he he put still as tough as in us. You know, he he doesn't like to complain about anything or you know let little things bother him. So I mean, he's walking around as if you know he's a, he's healthy 100 percent. Even though you know regardless of how he's feeling, he's going to show up every day and you know be the same coach and you know be that leader for us. And I think that we leaned on that a lot. 
And, you know, seeing him walk around in the boot is like, you know, extra motivation to go out there and play for some. You know, that's our guy and that's our head coach, and uh, we all love him, so. Okay, thanks, Mike. We uh, start to wrap up here. Uh, Chris Heidel, go ahead. Hey, thanks for taking my question. What, is, what does this mean to win today after last week's tough loss to uh, Georgia Tech in the championship game? What did you guys do to be more focused on winning this first round match? Um, I mean, obviously, it means a lot. You know, first off, it means a lot. Not many teams can, you know, advance in around 32. You know, uh, we just had to, you know, be ourselves. I think that, you know, the um, AC championship game was not the team that we're capable of. I think today was a, just a snippet of it. You know, I think we want to keep getting better as we advance throughout the tournament. But I think we just went out today and it was ourselves. You know, we, we defended. We know we, we got after it. You know, we rebounded, played tough, and, you know, made some great plays down the stretch. And that's who we are. You know, that's our identity. So I think as long as we keep being ourselves, we, we, we have a chance to win this championship. And, you know, that's our, our mentality going to each game just to be ourselves and, you know, and let the chips fall where they fall. Okay. Uh, finally, uh, Mike. No, I didn't have any more questions. Thank you. You're good. Okay. Thanks. Well, then, uh, Benjamin Meyerson, you're last up. Hey, Raekwon. I was just wondering, you know, you guys have you succeeded this year with your offense. You're the number one scoring team in the ACC. But uh, this game, you really relied on your defense. Can you just talk about how important that is and, you know, especially in the tournament, how that can really lead to success for you guys? Um, I mean, it's super important. I think that, you know, not many people view as a, as a defensive team, but if you know Florida State basketball and Coach Ham that, you know, we're, we're junkyard dogs, we get after it on the defensive end. I think we had a few slip-ups uh, in these last few games, and, you know, we know we're capable of on the defensive end, and I think that we showed that a little bit tonight. And uh, we still can clean some things up, but I, I think our defense is going to take us to where we need to be. And, you know, defense win championship, that's what everyone's saying. I mean, that's what we believe in. You know, that's what our coach is preaching. You know, that's what we're going to rely on, regardless of how our offense is. You know, we can always fall back on our defense and effort, and, and that's what they preach us, and that's what we're going to do, you know, for the rest of the tournament. Raekwon, thank you so much. Congratulations again. Best of luck in the next round. Thank you. And everyone will be joined momentarily by FSU head coach Leonard Hamilton. You can use this time right now to either raise or lower your hand as necessary. Bring me another chair. Bring me another chair. John, can you see Coach all right? Yep, we do see Coach Hamilton. Coach, if you're uh, set to start, flash a thumbs up and, and we'll get going. Great. Thank you for your time, Coach Hamilton. And we will now begin with an opening statement from Coach Hamilton. Then we'll go to questions. When we do, a reminder to use the raised hand function to indicate you'd like to ask a question. When you're called on for your question, please state your name and media affiliation first so that Coach Hamilton knows who he's speaking with. And coach, if you can go ahead, please give us a brief opening statement before we go to questions. Well, you got to give uh, Coach Miller a tremendous compliment because I thought he had his guys very well prepared. I thought they executed their game plan. We got out on them early. Uh, they fought back. Uh, we had a stretch there where uh, we we were defending, and getting stops, and we, then the st stretch where we turned the ball over four. Uh, in six possessions, and that gave them a chance to get back into the game at halftime. We came out the second half, we uh, extended the lead, and they fought back again. That just says a lot about uh, what he's instilled in his team, the, the confidence they believe in their system. Uh, and I mean, when I look at the stat sheet, I'm, I'm really surprised that they only shot 25% from three because uh, if someone had asked me without me looking at the stat sheet, I would have thought they was raining threes from the parking lot. Different than us, we're the, we're the number one three-point shooting team in the ACC. 
and we were able we were able to win a game going 0 for 9 from three. You know, we've had some challenges at late. We turned the ball over 25 times in the, the Georgia Tech game. We came tonight and we didn't shoot the ball well from three. So I'm looking at that as a positive. When we're, you know, we 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 have been able to to be competitive. Not we didn't win the game in the ACC tournament, but I thought that we bounced back and was able to overcome a little bit of adversity. You know, I think it says a lot that our guys are real anxious. I thought we had a lot of uncontested threes. Uh, I, I thought our guys were not really settled down. I thought they were, they wanted it so bad that I thought that mentally, emotionally, we we tried this a little too hard. Hopefully, we'll settle down and relax a little bit better and be better uh, and going to our next game from our standpoint. But um, North Carolina Greens, North Carolina, the University of North Carolina at Greensburg gave us all we wanted today. It was a handful, and you got a handful, and uh, they ought to be commended. Thank you for that, Coach Hamilton. Now we'll go to questions from the media. And again, use the raised hand function to indicate you want to ask a question. And our first question is from Kurt Weiler with the Tallahassee Democrat. Kurt, please unmute yourself here in a second and then go ahead and ask your question. Hey, Leonard, you, you talked about the three-point shooting. Was that something of seeing the success you were having inside, you maybe moved away from it more in the second half and there was a more effort of pushing the ball inside? Because, I mean, you only took, I think, one shot in the second half from outside well, the arc. You know, I'm going to have to go back and watch the film, but, but I'd like to think that maybe – North Carolina Greensboro understood that we were a pretty good three-point shooting team, and, and I thought they got to our shooters pretty good. But I also think that in the second half, uh, we got stops and got some deflections and, and got out and got some uh, some baskets attacking the, the rim. And it's one of those games where we were not, we did not, we did not decide that we were not going to attack from the perimeter. I thought we were taking what the defense gave us and gave that was given us, and we. Attack more on the dribble drive and at post ups and went to the boards, got some offensive rebounds, got to the free throw line, and we were able to get some easy baskets. And sometimes that makes up for when you're not shooting the ball very well. But I think our defense we, was the team, was the thing that won the game for us today. When you're not shooting real well and you turn the ball over, your, your defense can carry you in games like this. And, and this is what happened for us today. Okay, thank you, Kurt. Next, Mike with the Orlando Sentinel. Please unmute yourself, identify yourself, and then ask your question. Yeah, Coach Mike Bianchi with the Orlando Sentinel. Raekwon was saying that you're walking around practice in that boot as if nothing is wrong with you, and they're bar they borrow their toughness from you. Are you in pain? And um, what well, they, they said on TV today that you didn't want to use one of those scooters. Why is that? Well, they say pain is temporary. You know, it's not something that's going to last all the time. And uh, we have a job to do, and uh, we're going to work through whatever challenges that we have. I mean, uh, I've never had – I've been injured very few times in my life, and uh, we in the NCAA tournament, and um, I, my guys depend on me, so I want to – if I'm going to ask them to work hard and, and challenge themselves, I have to do the same thing to some degree. Uh, this is part of it. And to be very honest with you, uh, I, don't, I didn't even know I had the boot on once the game started. So um, it's something I just got to – it's a nuisance. Uh, it's, a, uh, it's a challenge, but uh, there are more important things than <laughs> worrying about me having a little pain. <laughs> are you going to have surgery? Uh, I'll wait and let the doctors uh, – we'll have that conversation when I get back to Tallahassee. Thanks. Thanks. Moving along now, Corey Clark with Warchant.com, where you can unmute yourself, identify yourself, ask your question. Leonard, was that as well uh, for most of the game uh, that you guys have played defensively this year or close to it? I mean, I know they hit some shots, but even some of the shots they hit – were really well contested. No doubt about that. I thought our guys were locked in uh, almost to a fault. You know, I thought we were really anxious, wanted to get that bad taste out of our mouth of, of losing the game last week. You know, our guys got a culture, and they challenged each other, called each other out, and there was no doubt that, uh, that they 
were very, very hyped up, so to speak. And I think sometimes when you're hyped up like that, it can, you can be want something too bad. But on the defensive end, I thought we, you know, we were we were energetic. Uh, we contained the dribble. We stuck with the game plan. Uh, we 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 knew that they, if you didn't contest shots, they were gonna knock shots down. But they they have such an uncanny uh, strength of ball handling and the ability to get into the lane and create for each other is as good as any teams that we played this year. So not only did we have to contest shots, we had to contain the dribble, but we had to shrink the gaps when the guys got by you to at least deter them from getting in and getting their kick-out jumpers. And in the first half, they got a few in the lanes where they got in and kicked out, and they, and they made us pay. So, But I thought we made a, a, some adjustments in the second half, and just enough for us to get us a spurt or two uh, to get a little separation and, and pull the game out toward the end. And I think you see there are a lot of what you, what you guys label as mid-major teams that are playing um, Power Five and major college teams right down to the wire. Uh, that just says that says a lot about how the game of college basketball is evolving. Uh, the high school, the AAU guys are developing, and uh, players are at, at every school. Uh, they are they are they're really really got this unique opportunity to get a scholarship, get the education. A lot of guys are benefiting from uh, this unique and special opportunity we have. And uh, it says a lot about where basketball is going and how it's growing, that on any given night, anybody can win. And you, you, we, that's why I'm so thankful uh, that we were able to pull this out today because this team played almost well enough to win. Uh, that just says a lot about the state of college basketball, the parity, and the, and, and, and the, the development of the high school and, and, and AAU programs that are, that are developing kids at an accelerated rate, and you know, no one really talks about the positive aspects of, of, of development. Corey, do you have anything else there? I'm good. Thank you. Okay, then thanks, Corey. Moving on, Lane Hurt from Seminoles.com. Lane, go ahead, unmute yourself uh, and ask your question. Coach Balsa has had some of his best games down the stretch. Uh, another one today, nearly a, a double double. We saw the improvement early in the season from year one to year two. How much has he improved throughout this season? Well, Balsa told me the other day that what he's trying to do is play to exhaustion and then come out of the game. Uh, he thinks that uh, sometimes he paces, not necessarily paces himself, but that's not. Uh, that this has been his focus here the, the last several games. And he seemed to be more productive the, 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 when, he's, when he's really going to exhaustion and then actually come out of the game. He's blocking shots, rebounding. He's running the floor, uh, giving us a, a, a inside presence that I think is really, really uh, showing uh, his capabilities. And he's only a sophomore, and I think his best basketball is ahead of him. Okay, thank you, Lane. Time for a, a couple more. Daniel Rodriguez, please unmute yourself, uh, identify your affiliation, and ask your question. Hey, Coach, this is Daniel Rodriguez with This League with Daniel. Um, first off, I want to say congratulations on winning the game. And I wanted to ask how it was coaching against Coach Miller, who he mentioned a couple of days ago, he played against you. Now he's coaching against you in the tournament. Um, <laughs> how is that, you know, you, you play, you're, you're coaching against someone that you played against and maybe what was said after the game about Coach Miller and just overall. Well, you know, I made a facetious comment um, about him in some media outlet. Uh, when we played them, when he was a senior, I believe, uh, he was a walk-on and seldom used walk-on. And we were leading the game. I thought we had a it, the game could have gone either way, and we were defending, I think, Carolina when they had a, one of their better teams. And they put him in the game, and I believe he hit three threes in the last five minutes of the game. And I told somebody I was going to have to give him a knuckle sandwich for uh, take, cutting our heart out of uh, – in that particular game. So the first thing he said to me tonight, he said, well, coach, I heard your comment about the knuckle, knuckle sandwich. And, <laughs> and he, he started laughing because 
that was truly one of the the most disappointing games that I've participated in. I thought we had everything planned. We had everybody guarded. He wasn't even in the scout report. He came off the bench and Roy used his Hall of Fame magic to put him in the game and he knocked down about I think it's about three threes and, and they were able to to get come away with a victory and that just broke my heart. And we laughed and joked about that. But he's done a tremendous job at uh, Greensboro. I mean, I can't say enough about the job that he's been doing. Uh, gosh, I don't, I don't know if with all the jobs that are open, uh, someone's going to realize uh, the outstanding job that he's done and be trying to steal him away uh, from Greensboro because he's done a fantastic job. Great game plan. Kids played hard. They were disciplined. Uh, we had to we had to work hard to win this game, and and uh, that this says a lot of, about uh, the great and fantastic job that he's doing with that basketball program. Next, we'll go to James Hill with BNC Sports. James, go ahead. Coach, a great tournament win is always good, whether you win by one or by thirty. Can you talk about the uh, tournament win today and, and what you see so far? You just want to survive in advance. And uh, we, we probably could have played a little better, and that's a positive. I know we're going to get back in rhythm. Um, not very many teams have this opportunity to move on to the next round. Uh, every team in America – Starts the season off, all what 380 some teams wanting to be in the NCAA tournament, and everybody would love to be able to stand on that ladder and hold that one finger up and say, "We're number one." So, in order to be number one, gosh, we got to be one of 32. And so now we're moving on to being one of 32, and it's a tremendous privilege and an honor to be in this position to have this opportunity, and we're gonna do everything we can to take advantage of. It. Coach, thanks so much for your time. Congratulations again, and best of luck now moving on. Thank you. That's it for this post-game news conference. A transcript of Coach's interview will be provided by ASAP Sports and posted along with a recording of this press conference in the NCAA Digital Media Hub at ncaa.veritone.com. Thank you so much for joining us here today, and have a good rest of your afternoon. Okay, thanks, Rob. Uh, we're just going to wait for video to come up first. There we go. So, yeah, we have head coach Wes Miller. Um, we will start with an opening statement from him, but for those media members, if you have a question for Coach Miller after his opening statement, we ask that you use the raised hand function to indicate you would like to ask a question. Uh, when you're called on, please state your name and affiliation. Please understand that coach cannot see you, so he needs to know your name and your affiliation as you ask the question. But first, Coach Miller, if you could just give us an opening statement. Yeah, well, uh, first you got to uh, tip your cap to Florida State, Florida State and State. Leonard's team. Um, they are really difficult to prepare for. They play a style of play that we haven't seen all year with some length and athleticism and depth that we haven't seen all year. I thought our guys did a great job of preparing this week. Um, I thought at times we did a good job of executing our game plan. At times we didn't. Er early in, in the game, it was obvious we were having a really hard time getting matched in transition. And, you know, they convert at a really high rate when they have opportunities and numbers in the open court. Um, and then there were times we, 
they didn't have numbers, but we weren't able to get matched and build out. And, you know, Gray, among others, is getting downhill. And then, you know, they're taking advantage of their size and ability at the rim. So that was something that I thought as we settled into the game, we were a little bit – we had some chances once we were able to get, get back and get our defense set. Um, I thought at times we were really good defensively. I was really proud of some of our defensive possessions, maybe not quite good enough. Um, but, you know, I, we're a program that's built on the defensive end of the floor. I, I thought our ball screen D at times was really good. I thought we were pretty scrappy and quick to the ball. And that allowed us to stay in the game. Um, and, and, you know, uh, I think the thing that hurts the most is you feel like you had some chances. You know, you're in a two-possession game um, in the last couple minutes. And uh, I'm feeling for Isaiah Miller, you know, missing the two front ends of the one-and-ones. Uh, he's worked so hard on his jump shot. And you can see it with his numbers. Guys, we're not even, you know, we're not sitting here in this tournament without him. He's meant more to our program than I could ever articulate um, but I feel for him because I know he'll take that hard so certainly we missed some chances there I thought Hayden Koval had a couple good looks and then you have the shot there around the minute mark with the side out of bounds and Keyshawn Langley takes a tough one but you know I think it's hard to score against their set defense and he's one of our better shooters and has good range so I think I can live with that so we did have our chances I thought we had some big stops there late and then I thought we didn't have some big stops there late and, and again weren't able to convert in the half quarter on the free throw line. But the biggest thing I'm proud of is no matter what happened, no matter how bad it looked at times or it kind of felt like it could get away, our guys just kind of kept fighting. That's the team that we've been all year. That's why we're here. And uh, if anything, I'm really proud to be the head coach at UNCG. I'm really proud to be the head coach of those guys because of the way that they carried themselves, not just tonight, but all year. So am I disappointed? Absolutely. I thought we blew an opportunity, uh, but I'm not – I'm not anything else but proud of how our guys handled themselves and represented our program and our university today on the floor. Thanks, Coach. Once again, media members, if you have a question, use the raise hand function. Uh, and when you're called upon, please state your name and affiliation. We're going to start with Joe Sierra. Hi, Wes. This is Joe Sierra from the News and Record. You're down 23-7 early. Was that a product of no matter how hard you prepare, you can't simulate what they're really like in a game sitting, setting? Well, I think it's a couple things, Joe. I think first, they've been great in the first half of games. And they've done that to almost everybody they played against. They jump on you early. Um, and so that's something they've done all year. We talked about that with our team. That was highly possible. And we kind of had to stay the course. So I think first, you got to give the credit to them. Uh, but I do think it took us a while, for whatever reason that is. It took us a, lot, a while to kind of settle in and go, we can play in this game. And you know, I'm going to look down here at the stat sheet real quick because I hadn't seen it yet, but we have 10 turnovers. I'm guessing three or four of those are in the first five or six minutes. Um, and it was just uncharacteristic stuff, you know, dropping the ball on a pitch-ahead pass, yeah, I mean, you know, like passing and catching, being a little sped up. And, again, give Florida State credit for that. But it did take us a while to settle in and – I, I do think that's the difference in the game, you know, because every time you claw back, it was hard to kind of get over the hump because you'd built a pretty big hole there early in both halves, by the way. Okay, our next question is going to come from Carter Hill. Hey, Coach. Uh, Carter Hill with Fifth Quarter. Congratulations on a fantastic season. You talked about it a little bit in your, your opening, but what do you think you proved to the nation today about UNC Greensboro basketball to those that may have been unfamiliar about your program? Well, I, I told the guys in the locker room, you know, it's about continuing to take steps forward when you're building the program. And it's, it's been a decade here. And the one thing that I'm really proud of is we continue to take steps forward. And each, each class, each group, group of kids that have come through have taken it another step. And Isaiah Miller's our lone senior, and he's the first player in UNCG history to go to two NCAA tournaments. So he took it a step farther than those that came before him that put him in this position. And so uh, we got to now take this thing another step and get to the point that we get over the hump in one of these games. So I hope what people see is we're not just a, a team that had a good year, a program that had a good year. We're a team in a program that continues to grow. Uh, and, and that's that's the goal as we hit this off season. We're going to continue to grow, and we got to be back in this position. Um, but we got to be back in this position and get over the hump because we've been here two of the last four years, 
and we've been in one or two possession games in the last four minutes in, e in, in each game that we play in the NCAA tournament and not, not able to get over the hump, so we got to take another step forward. But I hope the nation and college basketball sees that we're really competitive, uh, that we've been consistent, and, and hopefully we'll keep building on that. Okay, we're going to go back to Joe Serrera. I believe, Joe, he had a follow-up. Yeah, thanks. Thanks again, Wes. Um, yeah, they don't make a, a three-pointer in the game. That almost never happens. We know how good a three-point shooting team they are. You held them way below their season scoring average. How proud of you are, are you of the defense that your team played tonight and all, all season? Well, I, I'm listen. Uh, one of our the things that we really value here in terms of style of play is the defensive side of the ball first. Uh, we recruit to that. We demand that every day. We work at that every day. So I'm, I'm, I am proud. I'm proud of some of those defensive possessions. I'm proud to look down and see that they were 0 for 9 from 3 when that was a, a big key because that's the leading three-point shooting team in the ACC coming into this tournament. Um, now, I, I, I'd like to have some of those transition defensive possessions back where we don't talk throughout the course of the game and we give them an easy basket. I'd like to have some of those possessions that we don't keep rotating or stay down in the stance or lose, lose sight of man and ball and get beat back door. I mean, there's some possessions defensively that really cost us. So, but overall, I'm proud as can be, Joe. Um, and then I thought tonight, not just us. I mean, you go, you go back and you watch every team Florida State's played against this year. It is really difficult to score against their set defense in the half court. They switch everything. Um, you know, they're huge. They, they, they have energy for defense. Um, so it's really hard to score. We needed to score off of our defense to have success. And I thought when we were playing well in segments tonight, that's what we were doing. Because once it got set, it was, we knew it was going to be fairly difficult. Okay, our next question is going to come from Daniel Rodriguez. Daniel, go ahead. Hey, Coach. Uh, this is Daniel Rodriguez with This League with Daniel. I wanted to ask you, what do you hope your players take away from the experience maybe down the line 10, 15 years from now, being able to play in the tournament, especially with everything going on right now? Uh, listen, this is a lifetime experience. Um, you know, I was fortunate that I got to experience it three times as a player. So I, I know what that feeling is like. And I also know now, you know, 15 years removed, yeah, around 15 years removed and getting old here. But I also know now how you look back and how you remember those moments and you, you have a pride that you played in this event, which is the greatest sporting event in the world. Um, and so it's just, it's thrilling for me as a coach. When we cut down nets in Asheville two weeks ago, um, it's thrilling for me to know that they're going to have those same memories and they're going to have that same experience they'll remember for the rest of their life. And then the, the, the final thing with that is this is a NCAA tournament unlike any other. So it's one thing to say you played in it. It'll be something else to say you played in this one uh, because of, as you mentioned, all the stuff we've dealt with this year. Okay, our next question is going to come from uh, Kevin McCaskill, Jr. Kevin, go ahead. This is Kevin McCaskill Jr. from FP Sports out of Springfield, Massachusetts. Uh, Coach Miller, what improvements have you seen from Isaiah Miller over the course of his career at UNC Greensboro? Holy moly. Um, how much time you got? I mean, he, he's – when he walked through the door, he was competitive, maybe as competitive as anybody I've ever seen. He had world-class athleticism, um, and he had world-class instincts, basketball instincts, especially to the basketball or defensively in that, in that nature. But so he had that, and he has that stuff now, and it's improved. But every other part of his game has come leaps and bounds. You know, his freshman year, we would never play him at point guard. We wouldn't even think about it because he couldn't make good decisions. He couldn't handle with his left hand. Um, he couldn't finish with his left hand. We, weren't, he, we told him he wasn't allowed to shoot jump shots. Um, and every year he's just added to his game and, and added, uh, you know, something or multiple things to become a better player. And, you know, so he's improved in every way. You know, he tested the, the draft waters last year and was told, hey, you got to be a little bit better of a decision maker at point guard. Uh, he had like a one-to-one -one assist to error ratio. You look up this year, he's like 53rd in the nation in assist rate on Ken Palm. He wasn't even in – 
in, ranked in that category a year ago. That's just from one year to the next. They say you got to shoot the ball better. He shoots almost 50% from the field this year, and we ask him to take some really difficult shots and jump shots off the bounce. He improves his free throw percentage by 10%. I mean, that, those are just some examples, but he's improved in every way. He's, he's learned how to understand the game and how it works with five guys on both ends of the floor. Um, if he keeps improving at this rate, you know, I, uh, th there's just no there's no ceiling to what he can accomplish, and I, I do believe if somebody gives him a chance, he can he can play in the NBA right now because he can guard in the NBA right now, and he can guard the position that's probably the most difficult to guard, and that's the point guard position. And you saw him guarding ball screens tonight. I mean, I mean he, he gets a couple steals and makes a couple plays tonight when the game was on the line defensively against guys that are going to get their names called, and I think that's why he can play at the next level. Okay, we got time for one more question. We're going to go back to Joe Serrera uh, one more time. Go ahead, Joe. Thanks, Wes and, and moderator. Um, you mentioned Isaiah. What, what, do you, what did you tell him after he left it all on the floor tonight? And what do you tell some of the guys who are going to follow him, like Keyshawn, who really stepped up today and has in the second half of the season? You know, I just I, I told him after the game how much he's meant to this program and to the university, and to Greensboro, and to me personally, and, and all the people in that room. I told him how much I love him, and how much I'll never be able to express to him, how much I love him that I, I don't have the words to describe that. Um, and then I told all those guys that he, he took our program a step further than the guys that got it to where it was when he walked in the door. And it's their job now to take it another step for, further. That's the best way to honor him. Um, that's more or less what I said, and that's exactly how I feel, Joe. Thank you. Okay, thanks a lot, Coach. Thanks for your time. Yeah, thanks, guys. We will have a UNC Greensboro player here in just a few minutes. Uh, once again, uh, this is the UNC Greensboro press conference. We will have a Spartans player here in just a few minutes. The UNC Greensboro player who will be coming to join the press conference is going to be senior guard Isaiah Miller. We will have Isaiah in just a few minutes here. So uh, just as a heads up, we will have senior guard Isaiah Miller. Once again, uh, once Isaiah gets here, if you have questions for him, please use the raise hand function. And when you are called upon, please give your name and your affiliation reminder that uh, the players and the coaches cannot see you on this Zoom call. So please give your name and your affiliation before you ask your question. Okay, we are joined by uh, UNC Greensboro senior guard Isaiah Miller. Again, media people, media members, if you have a question for Isaiah, please use the raise hand function. And when you're called upon, uh, please give your name and your affiliation. A reminder that Isaiah cannot see you, so please give your name and affiliation. Uh, we're going to get our first question here. It is from Kevin McCaskill Jr. Uh, go ahead, Kevin. How are you doing, Isaiah? How you doing? Um, I'm good, man. Are you are you coming back for another year? That's the first part of the question. And um, what was your freshman year like? Uh, Coach Miller said that you weren't allowed to do a few things and that he wouldn't play you at point guard. Um, so that's the two questions. Are you coming back? And what was your freshman year like? Um, I don't know what I'm doing right now. As of now, I'm, I'm focused on leaving after, after I was finished. Uh, 
Yeah, but uh, I'm really focused on leaving after this season. And uh, freshman year, yeah, I, I wasn't allowed to do half the stuff I'm doing right now. That took uh, a lot of growth, a lot of uh, progression throughout the years. So uh, I was ready to do all that stuff my sophomore year. And I excelled on, on my abilities as I kept going on as a junior this, in this year. Okay, our next question is going to come from Joe Serrera. Go ahead, Joe. Yeah, I say Joe Serrera from the News and Record. Rough start to the game, down twenty-three to seven, but you guys fought back. What What was the 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 problem or the struggle early? I mean, I know you guys were prepared for them. Was it that it's really hard to simulate just how big and good they are? I mean, yeah. I mean, when you got guys that's out there, six eight, six nine, they're a really good team. I mean, a thing that really struck us was uh was transition D. That really got us at the beginning. Uh, we 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 couldn't get back at the beginning. And that what made they run. That's a really good team. Okay, once again, if you have a question for Isaiah, please use the raise hand function. Um. If we don't have any other questions, which it appears that right now we don't. Up oh, there we go. Uh, we'll take one from Daniel Rodriguez. Go ahead, Daniel. Sorry. Oh, no problem. Um, this is Daniel Rodriguez with This League with Daniel. Um, I wanted to ask you, just going over you know, all your years at UNCG, all the awards, what does it mean to be playing in the tournament and just uh, may possibly ending your, your college career in the tournament and then playing in such an important game? I mean, it mean, it means a lot. I mean, I came here my freshman year. I told Coach Miller I was coming back. I, I actually, me and Caleb actually promised that my freshman year. We got here. I mean, we got here. I wanted to make more history, man. I was, I was just, I just wanted to make more history here than what we did my freshman year. Okay, we're gonna go back to Joe Serrera. Uh, hopefully, we can get him on here in a second. I think I made. Yep. There you go, Joe. Go ahead. Dale, what, what did you say to your teammates, or what are you going to say to your teammates about what they need to do now, what you, the torch that you're passing to them, and what they need to do to carry on your, your legacy? Uh, I, I told them, first thing I told them, I hit the locker room. I told them I love them and thank you for a, a wonderful season. We had a great season. I went to war with those boys. They was they was they was with me side by side. When win or lose, we was we just kept coming together. And uh, uh, what I told them, I mean, what I'm gonna tell them when I see them when we you know get back, I'm gonna tell them like keep this thing going. I mean, as, as you can see, I'm a I think I'm a walking example when, when that comes to uh, something. I mean, hard work is really gonna show at the end of the day, and I think that's what I'm gonna tell them. Hard work, get back here, and we gon' we're not just gonna enjoy this moment next time. I mean, I'm with they UNCG always gonna be my family. I think they are gonna conquer this moment some point in time uh, after I leave. Okay, we're gonna go back to Kevin McCaskill Jr. Uh, go ahead, Kevin. Hi, uh, Kevin McCaskill Jr. from FP Sports, uh, Springfield, Mass. Uh, Coach Miller said that he believes that if a, if a team gives you the opportunity that you could play in the NBA because you're um, uh, elite pretty much on the defensive end, do you feel that about yourself? Do you do you feel you, do you feel like you can play in the NBA? Yes, I do. I do actually. I mean, I mean, I was just guarding six eight six nine. I, I don't care what size you is. I don't care what height you is. I think, I think my heart is gonna go over that. I've been. I mean. I'm a. I think my 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 record shows that I'm an elite defender. You know, I've been on the top list of steals for the past three years now. I mean, I don't know where else to put it. That ain't an elite defender. I mean, I play my butt off on, when it comes to defense. That's the one thing about me. My offense. I, that's what triggers my offense is my defense. We have time for one more question. If there is one, right now I do not see any. Okay, we do have one. Uh, we'll take a last question uh, from Eddie Hughes. Once again, give your name and affiliation. Uh, Eddie, where did you go? Uh, go ahead, Eddie. Isaiah, um, how special is UNCG and Coach Miller? You came there as a freshman. Y'all made the NCAA tournament. You're leaving. 
making the NCAA tournament and how special can this program be moving forward with what all you've done there in your time? This this place is very special. I mean, this is this is a community that you don't get it you don't get a lot. Well, I haven't had a lot in my life. I mean, this community is really behind you. I mean, this school is behind you. I mean, to like to the AD, to the people, to the people like just loads to the teachers at school, everything. It just this place is very it's just something I'll never forget. Something I'll always be grateful for, like the position they put me in with school and basketball. I'm always going to appreciate them. They're very special to me. Isaiah, thank you for your time. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. That's it for this post game news conference for UNC Greensboro. Uh, a transcript of Coach Miller's interview will be provided by ASAP Sports along with a recording of this press conference in the NCAA Digital Media Hub at www.ncaa.veritone.com. That's www.ncaa.veritone, V-E-R-I-T-O-N-E.com. Thanks again for joining us.